In this day and age, cyber warfare appears to be dominating the news. The internet landscape has been transformed into a binary war. Whether it's secret organizations hacking computers for fun or suspected government agencies attempting to steal classified information, it seems to be the norm for the tech savvy. Hello guys, welcome to Tecmo. Today in this video, we will look at some of the most breathtaking cyber attacks of all time. Make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video to know what makes these attacks breathtaking. Hacker targets Scientology. In January 2008, a team of hackers led by a New Jersey teenager launched a DDoS attack that knocked the Church of Scientology's website offline for several days. Anonymous is a decentralized international activist and hacktivist collective and movement adamantly opposed to religion, also primarily known for its various cyber attacks against several governments, government institutions, government agencies, and corporations. Dimitri Gusner, who was 19 years old at the time of the DDoS attack, was accused and convicted. The maximum penalty was 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine, but he was only given two years of probation and told to pay $37,500 to the Church of Scientology. A second man has been arrested in connection with the attack. The Melissa Virus it was a relatively simple virus that resulted in $80 million in losses. The Melissa virus infects Microsoft Word documents and then sends itself out as an attachment through email. It would send emails to the top 50 names listed in the Outlook email address box of an infected PC. Despite the fact that Melissa's creator, David Smith, stated that the virus was not intended to harm computers, he was arrested and sentenced to 20 months in prison. Antivirus software sales, incidentally, were at an all-time high that year. Solar Sunrise A systematic cyber attack was launched in the United States, which seized control of over 500 government and private computer systems. It was initially thought to be the work of Iraqi operatives. Because the hackers targeted machines running the Sun Solaris operating system, the attacks were dubbed Solar Sunrise. To investigate the situation, the U.S. government collected a variety of defense agencies, including the FBI and the Defense Information Systems Agency. No Iraqi operatives were involved in the hacking, much to everyone's astonishment. Three California teenagers were arrested as a result of the investigation. The attacks revealed how a coordinated effort could impact an entire country's IT infrastructure, even if it was closed for solar sunrise. Hacker steals tens of millions of credit card details. One of the largest fraud cases in U.S. history was orchestrated by Carlos Gonzalez, a hacker from Miami. Gonzalez was in charge of securing tens of millions of credit and debit card details from more than 250 different financial institutions. He had hacked the payment card network of a number of organizations, including the convenience store giant 7-Eleven. Gonzalez pleaded guilty in December to at least three separate hacking offenses in three different jurisdictions. Internet attacked. In 2002, a cyber attack on all 13 domain name system root servers in the United States nearly brought the internet to a halt. It was a DDoS attack that lasted an hour. While the attack took place within a short period of time, the scope of the attack was the most worrying aspect. The attack was described by US federal authorities at the time as the greatest and most complicated in history. For one hour, internet servers were substantially stressed, but users are unlikely to have suffered any negative consequences. However, if the attacks had continued any longer, the internet would have come to a halt. Phone lines blocked to win Porsche. Kevin Paulson is well known for breaking into the Los Angeles phone system in order to win a Ferrari in a radio contest. LA Keys FM was offering a Porsche 944 S2 to the 102nd caller. On June 1, 1990, Paulson seized all of the phone lines at the Los Angeles radio station KISS FM, ensuring that he would be the 102nd caller and win a Porsche 944 S2. Paulson ensured his success by seizing control of the phone system and effectively blocking incoming calls to the radio station phone number. Paulson went underground as a fugitive when the Federal Bureau of Investigation began pursuing him. Due to non-payment of rent, a storage firm cleared out a storage shed under Paulson's name, where computer equipment was discovered and sent to the FBI as evidence. The show's 1-800 telephone lines mysteriously crashed when he was featured on NBC's Unsolved Mysteries. Paulson was arrested in April 1991, and he received a five-year prison sentence. Paulson went on to become the senior editor of Wired News, an IT security journal. Morris Warm. 
The Morris Worm, sometimes known as the Internet Worm of November 2nd, 1988, was one of the first computer worms to spread via the internet, and it was also one of the first to receive widespread media attention. It also resulted in the first felony conviction in the U.S. under the 1986 Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. It was created by Robert Tappan Morris, a Cornell University graduate student, and launched on November 2nd, 1988, from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Computer Systems. He said that his creation was was created with the harmless intention of determining the vastness of cyberspace. When the worm encountered a crucial fault, it transformed into a virus that quickly duplicated and infected other systems, resulting in a denial of service. 6,000 machines were apparently compromised, resulting in estimated repair costs of 10 to $100 million. While this incident could be chalked up to an unfortunate occurrence, it undoubtedly contributed to the rise of today's devastating distributed denial of service, aka DDoS attacks. Damages caused by Mafia Boy Michael Kaltz, also known as Mafia Boy, is a former computer hacker and security expert from Il Bizard, Quebec. Kaltz, now 25, was a high school student in Canada when he decided to launch a DDoS attack on a number of high-profile commercial websites, including Amazon, CNN, eBay, and Yahoo, under the name Revolta, which means rebellion in Italian. Revolta led servers to become overburdened with various sorts of communications, rendering them unresponsive to orders. Yahoo was a multi-billion dollar web firm and the most popular search engine at the time. Revolta of Mafia Boy was able to take down Yahoo for over an hour. Carlos's goal, according to him, was to create domination in the cyber world for himself and TNT, his cyber group. As a result, Buy.com was shut down. Calls retaliated by using DDoS to bring down eBay, CNN, and Amazon over the next week. During this DDoS attack, Calls attempted but failed to knock down Dell. An industry analyst estimates that the attacks cost $1.2 billion in damages. He was captured afterwards. Calls was sentenced to eight months in open detention in 2001 while still a minor, meaning his movements and actions would be restricted. The court also limited him online access. Calls has subsequently found work as a columnist and has written a book about his ordeal. Cyber Attack on Google China When Google's Chinese headquarters discovered a security compromise in mid-December, it opened a can of worms, pun intended in which the Chinese government was implicated. Hackers got access to multiple Google business systems, stealing confidential information. Google said in a blog post that it had information to imply that one of the attacker's principal goals was accessing the Gmail accounts of Chinese human rights activists. As the organization delved deeper, they discovered that a large number of Gmail users in the United States, China, and Europe had their accounts accessed without their authorization on a regular basis. These emails belonged to Chinese human rights activists. All eyes were drawn to China's government, which has long been accused of flagrantly violating human rights. With www.google.cn, Google entered the Chinese market in 2006 and agreed to China's strict internet censorship system. The company reevaluated its business in the country after the cyber assaults in December 2009. To get around China's internet filtering policy, Google moved its servers for Google.cn to Hong Kong in March 2010. Teen Hacks NASA and U.S. Defense Department It was the year 1999. Jonathan James was only 15 years old at the time, yet what he had accomplished that year earned him a spot in the Hacker Hall of Fame. James had infiltrated a U.S. Department of Defense Division systems and planted a backdoor on its servers. He was able to intercept hundreds of internal communications from various government organizations, including emails, revealing usernames and passwords for various military computers. As a result of this, James was able to steal a piece of NASA software using the stolen information, costing the Space Exploration Organization $41,000 and forcing the agency systems to be shut down for three weeks. The software, worth $1.7 million, maintained the International Space Station's physical environment, including temperature and humidity control within the live-in space, NASA said. James was apprehended later, but due to his youth, he received a short punishment. After being accused of conspiring with other hackers to steal credit card information, he committed suicide in 2008. In his suicide letter, James refuted the claim. That's all for today. Thank you for watching the video. If you have enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Let us know which cyber attacks surprise you the most. Until next time.